Oh, hello, Internet. Welcome to It Builds Character. Sorry for the delay, guys. I um, was trying to take care of a few things. So I see we got a couple of you there in the chat. So hello to everyone who's coming out and checking me out live. If you're checking this out on YouTube, hello to you as well. Um, so it's Wednesday. Uh, it's a little bit later than anticipated. Um, but this is It Builds Character. What is It Builds Character, you may ask? Um, it Builds Character is a show where weekly I build a character um, or character build or something of that nature uh, suggested by viewers and fans such as yourself. Uh, so I unfortunately didn't have time to do it before this episode, but I want to get better about actually talking to... Maybe I can do it in the background while I, uh, you know, play with the camera here, uh, about who suggested these videos so that you guys will know who was responsible for, or, you know, who wanted to see this. So let me see if I can't pull that up in the meantime. So uh, I build everything from character concepts uh, to like a polearm wielding bugbear or a warforged pirate to um, characters like Captain Jack Sparrow, Iron Man, and so on. And I should say, I'm going to put this in the player name. This is Kevin Hines suggested uh, Ezekiel Stone from the 1999 TV show Brimstone. Uh, so that is what I am going to build today. Um, so I will talk a little bit about Ezekiel Stone, about my process as I go to build through him and, and what, the, what I decided on for his character. Uh, but first, let me get a couple of announcements out of the way. So if you're live in the Twitch chat, I will put this link out there for you right now. Or not. Did that link just not go through? Um, that's annoying. Yeah, I spelled that right, right? Extra life, yeah. So just not... Okay, awesome. Well, never mind. That didn't work, I guess. Uh, but either way, we have an Extra Life stream happening this weekend. It is Extra Life Game Day uh, this weekend. So starting at noon Eastern Time on twitch.tv uh, slash Nerd Immersion on Saturday. Saturday the 4th? Yes, Saturday the 4th at noon. We will be starting a 24-hour online Extra Life stream where I will be DMing in this chair that you see me in currently for a full 24 hours. My cast of players will rotate throughout that time, uh, and it is going to be an attempt, at least, at a cohesive story over the 24 hours. We did this last year, um, and it was a lot of fun. And this is going to be a continuation of that game and that universe. We're just going to be five years in the future. So... Uh, you can check on our YouTube and here on Twitch. Uh, we do have VODs available for last year's live stream. And this Friday, I'm going to rebroadcast last year's 24-hour stream in advance of the new 24-hour stream. So you guys can see that. Um, so, but because, let's try this extra life link one more time. Nope, that is so bizarre. Oh, you know what? Did I turn it off? I did. Haha. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go. Extra life. So, um, all the donations that happen as part of that stream go all to help uh, Children's Miracle Network hospitals and sick kids in need. Uh, so, any of the donations are greatly appreciated and they will um, help to go to good charities. But they will also allow you to alter the way the game is played on that weekend. You can, uh... I've done three so far, Fraley. Uh, we did one earlier this year. Um, in, in September, we, we did uh, in person, behind me at the table, 24 hours of Tomb of Annihilation right after it came out. Um, so this is going to be 24 hours online. This is a homebrew setting, still set in the Forgotten Realms, but it'll, it'll get a little crazy. Uh... But you guys can donate to the players, um, or you can donate to the DM, being me. Um, after tonight, uh, because it's been a rough week, um, no more coffee or caffeine of any kind. 
up until Saturday, so I will be jittery. But like one of the donation levels is you can donate to buy me coffee, so I'll have coffee or an energy drink. Um, you can donate to add rerolls, rerolls of natural runs, automatic critical hits, automatic critical misses for me and the players. You can donate to, uh, depending on how much you want to donate, you can donate to add monsters into the game, monsters of your choice, um, in varying degrees. I think if you donate into the, one of the higher tiers, you can put any monster of your choice into the game. You can design a monster and add it in, design a trap and add it in. Um, add catchphrases, rename NPCs, you know, you name it. Um, you can also add a deck of many things into the game. You can give the players wish spells. Um, no, Hypertroller. You can't donate to have me not drink coffee. Because that isn't a donation. So, uh, and if you don't want me to drink coffee, then the stream probably won't continue because I'll fall asleep. So, um, hopefully we don't get plagued with technical issues at the la the second to last shift last year. My computer decided to go into a mandatory, uh, Windows update, so we lost about two hours. Um, well, Fraley, I'm glad you... Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you like the YouTube videos. Um, yeah, you can pop in and out, you know, whenever you you know want to see what's going on, uh, see who's playing. Um, once the finalized list is done, um, uh, once the finalized list of characters and who and players is complete, I will post that so you can see who's going to be playing when. There are going to be some folks from other uh, from the various streams here on the channel that you're familiar with, as well as some folks from other you know more popular YouTube shows and podcasts as well. Friends of mine will also be playing. So, um, what else? Uh, yeah, so that'll be that. Uh, it can, like I said, it'll get crazy. It's for fun, you know, and it's for charity. So the rules, it's going to be a little le more rules light and. A little wonky with the with the players and and fans able to donate to add magic items or um to add decks of many things and things like that last year we had a deck of many things donated for each session and the rules with the deck of many things when those are donated are every player in the session has to draw at least once if you've already drawn during this whole 24 hours from the deck one time you do not have to draw uh but you can if you want to. So basically, if you play in multiple sessions, you won't get slammed with multiple card draws, but you do have to choose to draw at one time. Um, and we'll see. I mean, last year we had we fought a Pumpkin King. One of the characters became Batman. Um, but this year I already know we have a Were Hippo is one of the characters, so who knows what's going to happen. It'll get a little crazy. So, all right, that's enough for the announcements. I'll do a little more announcement stuff at the end, but let's jump into this build. So, for those of you who are unfamiliar, which I'm going to guess is probably a lot of you, actually, Brimstone was a short-run TV show. It started in, I think it aired all in 1999. It was a primetime Friday night show on Fox. Uh, and similar to other mythical and amazing shows... Um, uh sure i can you know what fraley i'll i'll you came here from youtube and you comment you complimented me and uh i'm a sucker for a little flatterer um the table yes i built it myself the the plans were all done up in my head uh i didn't really uh i do that kind of, i do woodworking all the time all any of the wooden things you see in any of the videos this ooh, this is a camera this entertainment center right here the shelving units on the back wall, my computer desk, the coffee table that's off in the corner, those are all built by me because I find more often than not, uh, I can't f get furniture the way I want it to look and the quality I want it to look without costing an arm and a leg, so I usually just build it myself. Um, thank you. Uh, the table, it's very, very simple. Uh, a lot of folks want me to write up, and I've been promising for a long time that I was going to put up schematics for how to make the table. Um, I am still tweaking things to the table on my end. Um, when I get it to a finalized place of where I really like it to be, 
I will absolutely release those plans. I will do a video. I will release an instructable, and I also post stuff on the website so you guys can have multiple options to find out how to do it. No, I do not have a wooden recliner. I have made reclining chairs out of wood, like Adirondack chairs, but they're not down here in the basement. Um, so, uh, and this is my first foray. When we move eventually to a new house, I'm going to make a new table from scratch, and this one's probably just going to either go to a friend or go to the curb and somebody else can get it because um, I have plans to make it bigger and better the next time. So, back to Brimstone. Brimstone is it was a TV show, like I said, 1999 on Fox. Uh, it ran 13 episodes before it was canceled. Um, it seems to be that around that time period, Fox liked to have really good, powerful shows that fans really, really liked and then canceled them after 13 episodes, as we saw with both Brimstone and Firefly. So, um, apparently the Fox execs in that time just really just didn't know, uh, what good TV was. So the premise of Brimstone, and forgive me because I have seen a handful of episodes when it first came out back in 99, and I couldn't actually find a good place to watch it online. To be fair, I looked on like the usual places like Amazon and Hulu and Netflix, and it was not on any of those places. I'm sure I could have torrented it or something and found it that way but i i stuck with uh and i wasn't going out of my way to try to find these things for this because i do remember it so the thought process is ezekiel stone is a cop he's a good cop he's one of the most decorated cops or so he'll tell you in manhattan um he comes home from uh, the job one day to find his wife like cowering in the corner crying or in the shower i can't remember uh and she's been raped um and it's very obviously very unfortunate so he's a cop he's an able-bodied smart individual and a great detective he tracks down her rapist and murders him in cold blood and makes it look like an accident by making it seem like it was an overdose and he is not uh repentant about it at all he is, I don't want to say he's proud of what he did, but he has no qualms. This guy did an, did an awful, awful thing to a woman that he loves more than anything else, and he did what he thought was right, and he made it so that that man could never do that again. So, uh, several weeks go by post that, and he takes a shotgun blast to the face in the line of duty and dies. Uh, but because he committed a mortal sin of murder and did not seem to be you know it wasn't an accident it was clearly premeditated he is uh sentenced to hell uh where he is tormented consistently as one would be when they are uh sent to hell and he is there for about 15 years he is constantly tormented and tortured in hell for his his sins uh, at which point the unthinkable happens, and uh, basically there's a jailbreak in hell. Uh, and uh, I guess it, it's led by, uh, I don't remember, it's led by some priest. Uh, and they basically, 113 souls escape from hell. A um, couple skulls escape over now and then, but this was like a big prison break, essentially. Um, and the devil who is powerless on earth makes a deal with ezekiel or zeke as he's called quite often in the show um that he's gonna send him back to earth to track down these other convicts or these escapees and he's gonna return them to hell um uh basically before one of those guys killed he's basically given a new life go out get these guys put them down before they can get a chance to put you down uh, and he'll earn a second chance at life on Earth. And then, because he's got a whole second chance, potentially the option to go to heaven. Um, because he's got a new lease on life, and like the previous sins are erased. Um, and uh, throughout the course of the series, he is, the devil is a, he's one of like, I guess he's like the two main characters, right? You have Zeke, and you have the devil, and the devil is there constantly. And he plays, I can't think of a good analogy to his character, but he will 
a Q, actually. Q from Star Trek The Next Generation is a pretty uh, is a pretty decent analogy, I'd say. Where he pops in, he kind of causes a little chaos and messes with Ezekiel and, and whenever possible and then pops out. Uh, where his Q was relegated to a handful of episodes, the devil is in every single episode. Um, so... Um, what uh, what else happens with Ezekiel? So he has uh, his body is covered in ta- uh, 113 tattoos. Uh, the tattoos represent all of the souls. When he uh, sends one of these uh, evil souls back to hell, the tattoo um, removes itself from his body in like in a painful manner. But he knows that it's been done. Uh, how do you? These souls can't be killed while they are on Earth. The only way that they can be killed is if you destroy their eyes because the eyes are the window to the soul so you have to destroy their eyes and that's how you defeat them same works for him as well if his eyes are destroyed he dies and will go back to hell and then he'll be trapped and then they'll send somebody else back to do the work for him um so um as far as powers go um And I built him as a Revenant, uh, as the race for the Revenant, this one here from the Gothic characters uh, on Earth Arcana. The reason I went with a Revenant is because he was a human, and Revenants are typically humans. But the whole not being able to die thing, uh, and basically every night when he goes to sleep and he wakes up in the morning, he he wakes up in what he was wearing when he died. Which was basically... I think like his a tattered uh, like uniform, and he has on him whatever he had when he died. So for him that is like thir- what is it uh, thirty six dollars and twenty seven cents, his service badge and his fully loaded service thirty eight revolver. So every night when he goes to sleep, he wakes up with a fully loaded pistol, thirty six dollars and twenty seven cents, a badge and tattered clothing. So I figured the closest analogy to that is the D&D 5e Revenant. Um, I did a little tweak. So the knowing the distance slash direction to your goal, I'm counting that as his tattoos. Um, If he's below half health, he regains 1 HP at the start of every turn. I think that's reasonable. Um, If dead, he returns to life in 24 hours within one. That's a Revenant ability. I don't think that actually fits the character so much in this case, but you get what I'm saying. He... He can't really be killed. And then I tweaked, I added on uh, resistance to non-magical damage because it seems that him and these other evil souls basically can take gunshots no problem. They can walk through fire. They can fall off buildings. And it doesn't really seem to cause them too much harm. It doesn't really slow them down in a significant manner. Um, Some of them do have uh, superhuman powers like the ability to turn invisible and control fire and have superhuman strength and things like that and the way that's explained is the longer that you are tortured in hell the uh the more of these powers you have when you're returned to uh to earth when they broke out uh let's see if they have i have the exact wording um they do not bleed they don't have a heartbeat um the souls can't be killed only again to the eyes um uh, they can feel pain inflicted oh and they can only be killed by another um escape escaped damned soul so uh humans couldn't kill them uh ezekiel can uh and they can feel pain inflicted from those uh other souls as well so keep that in mind uh and again they do i can't find the exact wording that i was looking for um uh where is it uh yeah the longer one spends in hell the more hell becomes a part of them so that's how some of them have additional abilities and additional powers so (sighs) building his character uh this is how i decided to set out his stat spread and this is already with the revenant stat a boost supplied which is a plus one to two stats and a plus one of constitution um I, didn't, I gave him a charisma of 8 only because that's a functionality of, of trying to build a character with a standard array, as we've talked about. Um, he's, intel- he's actually uh, he's a very good detective, so I made him the kind of city watch 
background here from the Sword Coast Adventures guide. So that's going to give him. Uh, so I can give him athletics and investigation. Uh, let's get extra languages and so on. Um, that's just that's as close as we're going to get, I think, to uh, to a cop, uh, to a detective. Um, so uh, the interesting thing is he's not necessarily smarter or more powerful than any of the creatures that he's fighting, and in a lot of cases they are more powerful uh than he is so he relies it's interesting because it makes your hero less of a true like muscly burly hero and he's more of uh he has to be intelligent and be smart and think about what he has to do but at the same time he's only trying to damage these things eyes so anything that can cause damage to an eye which as we know is most things uh, most anything sharp, I think there's an episode where he kills one of them with one of the pens that's on the chain that you find at the bank. Um, like, so a pen or a pencil is a viable weapon against these things that can only be harmed if you take out their eyes. So um, he has to rely on resourcefulness and uh, cunning. And his, he's still a very good investigator even though uh, and detective even though he's been kind of out of the loop for 15 years but that being said maybe they were going to explore this in future seasons and future episodes but in the 13 episodes that he that exist he didn't really get like powers right i feel like maybe that was like a end of season one planned season one and future seasons maybe he would gain access or learn that he had additional powers but for the most part, he's just a dude. So it's really hard to build this character um, and determine, you know, what you're know, what you going to do. Because, like, all we know about him is he's a cop. And he uses, like, and he's trained, like, and he, has a, he starts every day basically with a fully loaded pistol. So, like, I don't feel like... I feel like I could build him as like a gunslinger, like the fighter gunslinger archetype that Matt Mercer built. But I feel like I might just give him proficiency in like firearms and give him that, just give him a gun. And like part of me is like, oh, well, you could maybe say he's a rogue, right? Like a mastermind rogue or an inquisitive rogue. Um, and I, I won't argue with you on that option I, I feel like he does he's a he's sleuthy he's detectivey and masterminds or inquisitives inquisitive i guess which i think is actually in this one here if we keep scrolling down yeah excel at rooting out secrets and unraveling mysteries you're lying a sharp eye for details which you all have finally honed ability to read words and deeds of other creatures determine their true intent you excel at defeating creatures that hide among prey uh, among and prey on ordinary folk in your mastery of lore uh, and your sharp eye makes you well equipped to expose the end uh, end hidden evils now when I read that that sounds pretty good right I mean that sounds more or less like everything I've just been describing but uh, he doesn't just come off to me as a roguey type right he's not He's not sneaky, and I get that this isn't necessarily... That rogues don't necessarily have to be sneaky, so I guess I'll, I'll concede that fact. But uh, rogues make the best use of uh, dex weapons as their sneak attack ability is tied to either, I think, ranged weapons or finesse weapons. Um, and, you know, I just... Hmm... Well, I'll leave it up. Let me pull the chat while I'm th sitting here thinking. Based on my description of what I've told you about this character so far, what do you guys think? Does he fit into this inquisitive rogue mindset? Or does he fit more just like into a generic fighter archetype? You know, like a champion fighter. And we just give him proficiency with a gun. And that's how we build him. Or do we say he's more of an inquisitive rogue? But like, I feel like we're building an entire class just based on the fact that he's like a decent detective and we could just, he already has proficiency in investigation so that may be enough to cover it in and of itself like it doesn't necessarily need to be his whole class based on something that he's good at 
uh, which can be covered with a skill proficiency. Um, you know, and he doesn't really come across to me as a sneak it like he doesn't like sneak attack. He doesn't have this like ability to really suss out crazy uh, weaknesses in his enemy and deal a ton of damage to overpower them. That kind of a thing. So that leads me to lean against Rogue. Um, we've got proficiency in intelligence. We could probably give a proficiency in insight if he has a means to get access to it. Just things that will allow him to be a good detective. Uh, you know, perception as well. Uh, and, and that just abilities that make you a good detective don't necessarily mean define who you are class-wise in Dungeons & Dragons. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Let's, I'm going to, you know what, I've convinced myself to build a champion fighter. So, let's go take a look. So what does he get? He's going to get two ability scores. Hey, we just talked about it. Let's go ins, or two skill proficiencies. Or go with insight and perception. I guess you could also argue maybe not insight, maybe survival. Yeah. I'm going to say not insight, let's go survival because that's more of your tracking ability. It's going to have strength and constitution saving throws. So at level, let's see, what do we got? Uh, there was feats I was hoping to maybe see if we could give him a feat or two. Let's see, skip ahead. Oh, too far. I'm thinking I'm going to give him Tavern Brawler as a feat. Proficiency with improvised weapons seems like a good thing for him. Um, so we're going to do at level 4, we're going to bump his dex to 16 and his strength to 17. Uh, so let's go down here. So score improvements. Plus 1 dex plus 1 Strength, Tavern Brawler Feet, so that's going to bump this up to an 18, oops, that's 18, then we can go down here and say, proficiency in improvised weapons, uh, unarmed, Strike equals 1d4. And I think it was a pin. Uh, when you hit a creature, bonus action grapple. What was it? Unarmed strike? Yeah. You hit a creature with an unarmed strike. Grapple. Sure, but the chat is yeah okay cool. So uh, then, what do we got? That was four and six. So we've got eight. Um, at eight, we're gonna raise his constitution to a sixteen, and at twelve, we're gonna raise his intelligence to a fourteen. So plus two con plus two int. So we can go ahead and fill these out as we go down the list here. And then we can put these in as well. Eight, three, seven, oops, two, zero, negative one. And then we can fill out all of his skills as well. Zero. Two, eight, negative one, two, zero, negative one, six, two, oops, that's twenty two, it's a little bit much, four, negative one, one, two, three, 
three, four. Passive perception is a 14. So we're gonna say unarmed, oops, unarmed. We'll go down here and we'll say pistol. So this is gonna be eight. 1d4 plus four. Seven, and this will be ten plus three. Um, okay, we don't need the gothic characters anymore, we don't need the sword plus adventures guide anymore. Gunslinger, we got what we needed, so back to fighter. All right, so. Come down here, fighting style. We'll say that he's probably got archery. Plus two with ranged weapons, which is gonna make his pistol nine. Um, second win, bonus action, heal, 1d10. Plus fighter level HP, so that's a little bit more, adds a little bit more to his resilience. Action surge. Uh, then at three, as a champion, what does he get? Uh, crit on a 19 or 20. Improved critical. Crit on a 19 or 20. Uh, and then we have uh, extra attack. Extra attack. Two. Uh, then. Five. So uh, seven is Remarkable Athlete. Remarkable Athlete. Um, at half your proficiency bonus rounded up to any strength, dex, or constitution check you make that doesn't already add your proficiency bonus, jump adds your strength modifier. Um, so jump increases by strength mod. Is that long and high? A long jump. Okay. And we'll go ahead and add that in. So that's half his proficiency bonus to any strength, dex, or con check that he is not proficient with. So his initiative is normally a three, but his proficiency bonus is a four, which half is two. And uh, I'm sorry, that's three. Uh, his dex, uh, wow. Initiative is a dexterity check that he doesn't add his proficiency bonus to. So this is actually going to go up to a five. Acrobatics is going to go up to a five. Um, sleight of hand is going to go up to a five, and stealth is going to go up to a five. So, uh, then we're going to have indomitable reroll a failed saving throw. I believe he'll have two uses of that, right? Because he'll get one at nine. Nope, just one at nine. Then at 10, he gets a second fighting style. Um, fighting style. And what are we going to choose for his second fighting style? We are probably going to. He doesn't have a shield, so we're going to say defense. Defense. Plus one AC. Wearing armor. I believe that's everything. Right? Extra attack. Indomitable. Martial archetype. Extra attack. Yeah. So we can do his HP, which will be 3 and 6 is 9 times 11 is 99 plus 13 is. What is that? 112? I think that's right. Just do a little math, just to check. 
Yeah, all right, I was right. Second guessing myself there. Um, so he's gonna have 12 d10 hit die. Uh, we're gonna say that his pistol is magic. It doesn't do anything different. We're just gonna say that it is a magic pistol as far as damage is concerned because it magically regenerates ammo and its physical presence, even if it's like beaten up or anything, every day at dawn. Um, and because he doesn't really wear, he doesn't have any magic items, which is what makes it such a quick build overall. Um, even though we spent a lot of time talking about other stuff. So we're going to say that his AC, we're going to give him studded leather armor, uh, which will basically be his, his, uh, his police uniform. So that'll be 12 plus his dexterity modifier is a three plus his defensive fighting style makes his AC a 16. Um, well, and I guess I don't typically throw an alignment, but he's very lawful neutral. He's very, uh. Actually, I don't even know if he's lawful neutral. We're just going to leave that out because I haven't put a lot of thought into it. Lawful neutral is like your Judge Dredd type guy, but he clearly didn't take the... He just law into his own hands, so he might be chaotic neutral. Mm. So that's going to be pretty much it, guys. I mean... Unfortunately, like I said, cool character concept, and that's um, that's one of my biggest problems, is really cool characters that are awesome for drama purposes for a television show are awesome characters and we love them, but they don't necessarily make good characters in D&D. Um, just like on the same token, good authors probably wouldn't make good Dungeon Masters because, you know, you uh, if you want your story to go a certain way, you can't leave it up to interpretation and leave it up to die rolls. So, I mean, he's just like a, an un, kind of an undead dude uh, who is just like, but he's an average, like every man for X, you know, minus the whole damned soul thing. But that means that like, he doesn't have crazy abilities. He doesn't have magic. He doesn't have, you know, anything that makes him above and beyond super powerful. That's really crazy to try to shoehorn into a D and D character. He's just a guy, which is why I feel like a champion fighter is like the guy, right? Um, as far as, uh, you know, like, simplicity's sake, like, he's not using, I don't know, superiority die. He's not, like, a battle master, commander, tactician. He's not an eldritch knight. You know, he doesn't have magic. You know, he's not really ragey to be enough to be a barbarian. Uh, so, you know, he's definitely not holy, so he's not a paladin. Uh, you know, and he's not really, he's not uh, roguish. So this is uh this is my build of Ezekiel Stone from the television show Brimstone. Um, if you can find it, it's a pretty good show and it has a pretty big following from what I was able to determine on the internet still. So oh, I guess if we can put in here that he's a fighter. Twelve. So uh, thank you again to everybody who came out here to chat with me live. Um, once again, I will throw the extra life link in the chat. Uh, so you guys can come and check us out this weekend. I will be nailing down the final statistics for that in the next couple of days. Uh, so we'll be streaming again live from noon Eastern time on Saturday to noon Eastern time on Sunday. Unfortunately, that does go right through the middle of daylight savings time. So one of our streams will be four hours, not three hours. And we will also be technically doing a 25-hour stream, not a 24-hour stream. Um, so uh, be on the lookout for that. And then upcoming this Monday will be the return of the Princes of the Apocalypse game, the second game in that series uh, where I play Princes of the Apocalypse with some awesome folks from other D&D podcasts like Brittany from The Venture Maidens, Chelsea from North by Northwest, Davis from Dank Dungeons, and Bucky from Taking Initiative. So, uh, And some of them you will see this weekend in the 24-hour stream. So hope to see you guys there. Uh, and uh, until then, guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little It Builds Character episode. And I'll see you next time.